Hello, if you haven't watched my last video where I talked about taking the equirectilinear map and transforming it into a globe like this, I would recommend that you do because it explains how I did it and why. But once I had that, I wanted to also be able to track how the sun moved across the earth and how the terminator line moved as well. And I might talk about it in another video later. But what I did was I also added 15 degree of zenith angle circles around the earth from the GP of the object that I'm looking at, which is the sun in this case. And you can just barely see the white line here. That would be 15 degrees from the yellow line, which would be the terminator. And then the black lines are the 15 degree markers at night. And I decided to compare what the computed view of the Earth from space would look like compared to images taken from the Himawari 8 satellite. And I noticed that the Himawari images didn't quite have the full view of the Earth than my rendering. And if you compare the two side by side, here's India right here, and this would be the Arabian Sea right here. So the Arabian Sea is right here. Here's India. And here we're getting into Thailand and the Philippines, etc. And then, of course, Australia is down over here. And as one of the false arguments that flat earthers keep making about images from space being fake because they don't all look the same. So in this case, I believe this is Africa. And you can see that Africa is slightly smaller in this one. That would be, I guess, that would be Australia, that would be India, that would be the Middle East over here, and Africa's over here. So you can see that the size and the shape of the continents do not appear the same in all of these photos, and therefore flat earthers keep saying that it's fake, it's false, and it's CGI, which is complete nonsense. And so here's my explanation. Assuming for a second that we could build a camera with infinite zoom and we were able to look at a planet that was an infinite distance away, every single light ray that would hit the camera would be parallel and the camera would be able to capture a full 180 degrees of the full 360 degree circumference of the earth or the planet or whatever like this but it really depends on how far away the camera happens to be so let's say you're a hundred thousand kilometers or five hundred thousand kilometers away from the earth the portion of the surface of the earth you're going to be able to see is going to be less than 180 degrees. If you get really close to the earth like this, you're only going to be able to see this amount of the surface of the earth. And in this case, you may only be able to see maybe 80 degrees or 90 degrees or even less, which really is far, far less than 180 degrees. So when I came back to compare what the Himawari 8 would capture relative to what I generated in the computer, I had to be able to determine roughly how far away the Himawari 8 was, or given the fact that I kind of knew what it captured, I could try to estimate how far away from the Earth the Himawari 8 satellite was. And I know that this is 180 degrees because that's the way I coded it. And I knew that I had the right time. So you can see this is at 8.40 in the morning my time compared to 8.40 for this image from Himawari 8. And you can see that the Terminator line kind of followed on the west side of India where you've got this gulf and it kind of comes along over to here and it wraps up to about here and if i compare the same thing here it would be about this much before it is no longer visible so i decided what i would do is measure the full radius which was about the middle of this green dot which represents my current location or the location of the ground position of the Himawari satellite and I figured it was right around here somewhere where the Terminator line ended so I had measured 450 pixels. 
so I measured 450 and then I also measured where the terminator line was which was around 444.7 one of the first things that I really had to do was to find out where the terminator line ended so if I come over to here Himawari 8 is right above Papua New Guinea and so if I come back over to here it would be roughly right around uh, here somewhere and the terminator line I could see pretty much to about there and if I come back over to here and I try a similar direction like this the full radius was about 450 pixels and in this case I measured 443.8 pixels for the terminator the first time I measured it I had measured 442.8 pixels so in this case I only added an extra pixel out of 450 there is going to be some small margin of error but the trick now is to see what percentage of the full 180 degrees the camera can see and so let's just say that the satellite is off in space at some unknown distance and it sees the earth over here these lines would represent the rays of light that are tangent to the outermost part of the earth that the camera can see from that distance so this point here would be the point of the circle that the earth can see if I can quantify the ratio between this x component and the full radius that represents a full 90 degrees I should hopefully be able to calculate this angle here if I can see the entire thing then this divided by this would be 1 the arc cosine of that would be 0 degrees which would represent this angle in this case let's say the arc cosine of 50 percent might represent maybe a 60 degree angle or roughly thereabouts I'm just making these numbers up without looking them up but that's the idea that I had so I generated the fraction of where I had calculated the terminator line for that angle relative to the full radius and I came out with a fraction of 0.984 I had calculated the arc cosine of this fraction and I got 10.2630959 degrees. If the opposite side is 6,371 kilometers and I have an angle of 10.263 degrees, the tangent of 10 degrees, by the way, is 0.18, I had calculated the distance by dividing the opposite by the tangent and I got 35,186.16 kilometers. According to Wikipedia, the perigee and the apogee of the Himawari 8 satellite is 35,791 and 35,795 kilometers. If I take the average, my first estimate was off by 600 kilometers with an error of 1.72%. If I add the extra one pixel in the measurement, then I'm off by 2,000 kilometers out of 35,000, or I have an error of 5.76. These are extra calculations that I put in to be able to change the zoom in real time. I just tied it into the zoom setting for the camera. And a default zoom of 12, would be the full 180 degrees and I've got this reversed but it doesn't really matter if I change the zoom what it's doing is it's changing this fraction to be able to see less of the sphere as if I was approaching the earth from space like this and so finally I was able to calculate a value that was pretty close to what Himawari 8 would see with the appropriate zoom level. From a simple observation and a bit of number crunching I was able to arrive at a value very close to the published distance that the Himawari 8 satellite is said to orbit. That's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, I would appreciate the thumbs up, the subscribe, the comment below, and all of that other good stuff. And I'm going to see you again in another video at some point soon. Bye for now.